Devin Booker's career has been a fascinating one. Drafted as a shooter, in the mold of Clay Thompson who never ran pick and rolls in college, he was thrust into the lead guard role early when the Phoenix Suns decided to tank. He now has become one of the most well-rounded guards in the NBA, one who can shoot off the ball or just as easily shift into running the offense as a lead guard. He's clearly one of the best shooting guards in the NBA today, but the media was split on him throughout the beginning of his career, even though NBA players were very in on him as a young player. Kevin Durant said, he's next about Devin Booker. LeBron called him a future all-star when he was 20 years old, and even Kobe symbolically passed the torch to Devin Booker. I recently asked JJ Redick about the disconnect between the media and the NBA players because for whatever reason, the players knew early on, but the media didn't. Here's what he had to say. Oh, the Suns weren't very good, especially early on prior to him really reaching uh, an all NBA all-star level, which he's been now for a number of seasons. I think that 70 ball probably had a lot to do with it um, in terms of making him a household name. I, I remember watching very early on in his rookie year, and he was, I don't know why I have this image like seared in my brain, but he, was, he wasn't playing a lot um, early on. And they, the camera panned to him on, this, on the bench, and he had this smile on his face. And I'll never forget the look. And I remember just saying, I thought at the time, mean, I'm watching the game, I'm like, that motherfucker's going to be good. I didn't, even, I didn't even really <laughs> seen him play yet. There's just a confidence. There's a there's a belief in self that he's always had as an NBA player. Um, and, and playing for the Clippers as well and getting to play them four times a year. Um, you know, those first couple years when I was in L.A. and getting to battle against Devin, uh, you could see right away just how talented he was. And, and keep in mind, like, you know, he was 19 and 20 years old when he was doing this his first couple years. But but look, it, it, I think the, the media, and this is just a general statement about the NBA media, the media generally gravitates their stories and attention to the best teams and the best players. And... The real, the real fans, um, the sickos like CP and I, are watching Sacramento and Oklahoma City on a Tuesday night, hmm. and 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 trying to figure out who the next guys are. And you know, I think that's that's part of it. And and that that probably doesn't play well in traditional media. What JJ said makes sense. If you're not watching the games and you're just focused on the title contenders, maybe you don't have the right perspective to know when young players on bad teams will be stars. Devin Booker is on a contender now, and he's thrust even more into the limelight with the injury to Chris Paul. Those years on the bad teams where he was forced to be a lead guard prepared him for this exact moment. Here's a clip from the first game without Chris Paul. In this first play, Devin Booker curls around a staggered screen with a dribble handoff from DeAndre Ayton. The screen forces his defender to go over and that means Booker has inside options which include a mid-range jump shot or a potential pass to DeAndre Ayton. He freezes his help defender with the pump fake, then freezes the secondary help defender with a pass fake to Ayton before firing a pass to Jay Crowder who was on the wing who he never had his eyes on until the last moment. That's using his scoring threat, the lob threat, and his eyes to create an open shot. This next play is a basic four out pick and roll with JaVale McGee, but once again, his eyes sell the lob to JaVale, which causes the help defense to come off the corner just in time for Booker to fire a skip pass to McHale for the open three. Because Booker is such a threat to score at the rim compared to even guys like Chris Paul, many of his passes will be to shooters instead of inside players because the defense will constantly converge on his drives and stop him from throwing that lob pass. I think one of the reasons NBA players were so right about Booker early is not just because they're sickos who watch more games, they also play against the players, and nothing can give you the insight into those guys like playing against them. Here's JJ remembering one of Devin Booker's best games ever in which JJ took turns guarding him. I was... I was never a stopper, but you know there was a stretch of my career where 
you know, I, I guarded my position no matter what the matchup was. I had to guard Ginobili at times. I had to guard Kobe at times. I had to guard D. Wade. Um, and it wasn't, you know, because of my wingspan, I just, there was a, not a lot I could do against bigger players. But that year in Philly, I would a lot of times guard the point guard. That was Ben's rookie year. So I would always start on the point guard. So I, for some reason, I had to guard Kemba a lot that year. I had to guard Dame when we played Portland. So Devin was giving it to everybody. And, and finally, towards the end of the game, and it was, we, we were getting our asses kicked in the first half. And um, I know I had a big second half, but a number of number of us got us going. And, and we cut into the lead. I don't think we were ever really in a position to win the game, but we cut into the lead, and, and Devin just kept wearing us out. And finally, towards the end of the game, I was like, let, let me let me check him. And I I, that, I remember that possession vividly, and I guarded him really well. And, yeah, you did. And he was, you know, he picked up his dribble, and he just, I, I mean, it, if I was any closer to him, I, it would have been a four-point play. He just, he's a shot maker. Um, and I, I, look, I, going back to what I said earlier, I... I, I saw that when I played for the Clippers when he was 19 and 20 years old. I knew he was going to be special in this league. Um, anybody who uh, has that ability to create and play at that pace and and score at all three levels is going to be special. And on top of that, as we've seen, he works, he gets better, he competes, he loves the game. When I interviewed CP afterwards, we were talking, he said, Devin's Devin book is one of us. He's a sicko too. <laughs> Were you right about Devin Booker or did his play over time convince you? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for watching. If you're interested in our podcast, subscribe to the timeline of Phoenix Suns podcast on all podcast apps and you can check out our full episode with JJ Reddick right now. You can also sign up for our Patreon for additional podcasts and even watch parties. Thank you to our MVP level patrons here. We'll put the link in the description below.